Last week we talked about JavaScript's error constructor and its built-in error objects. This week we're going to talk about how to make our own custom error types. It's not terribly difficult, and especially in large applications it can be really useful, since it allows you to pass along extra data with your errors. Let's dive in. We're going to do this with ES6, which means you'll need a transpiler like Babel if you want to support older browsers. But if you're working on a larger app, you're probably using Babel anyway, and if you're a web developer who's learning on your own, you're probably using a modern browser, so... I think we're all good here, right? Let's start by defining a custom error. We're going to fake an XHR error. Here's the code. Let's break this down real quick. When extending an existing JavaScript class, you can use a constructor to explain what to do with any incoming parameters. In this case, we're saying our custom error class can take parameters of status, URL, and an unknown number of additional parameters. We're going to handle the first two ourselves, including telling our constructor that if URL isn't defined, it should default to a string saying unknown, and then we use the super command to say take any additional parameters and just pass them on to the parent constructor. In this case, that's the error object we discussed last week, so at very least we know it's going to need a string for its message property. After that, we check to see if the capture stack trace property exists on the top level error class. If it does, which as of this writing only happens if you're using Google's V8 JavaScript engine on which both Chrome and Node run, then we can pass the stack trace along, which is nice to have. Finally, we add a few local properties to our custom class. The name, the status, which is defined by the parameter, and the URL, which is also defined by the parameter and can default to unknown. These properties don't exist on the normal error object. Well, except name, which we're overriding. Let's throw an error and print out our data. Save that, and let's check it out. As you can see, this works as expected. We pass a status, a URL, and a message. Our custom error handles the name, status, and URL. The message gets kicked up to the parent class, which handles that. The resulting error has all four pieces of information, two of which you wouldn't find in any of the default JavaScript error types, and one of which, name, is more useful than a generic error would be. Let's do one more thing. Show off that default parameter value. Try this code. All right, save that, refresh. Note that error.status stays as undefined because we didn't give our constructor a default value for that parameter. But error.url switches from undefined to unknown because we did provide a default in that case. Custom errors are very useful when building complex web applications because they allow you to standardize your messaging while simultaneously allowing for additional detail if and when you need it. I definitely recommend using them if you're finding that JavaScript's default error constructor is just not giving you all the data you need. That's it for now. See you next week.